Oh, there he is. Ah, there you go. Oh yeah. my God! Sorry, I got beat up at the bank, and then there what? was this girl with the butt, and yeah, it was a big thing. You got beat up? Who the hell did that to you? Yeah, what? Well, I walked into the bank to deposit money, and there was these three guys, and they were standing at the bank, and their eyes were all glossed over, and they didn't, you know, they didn't look like they knew what they were doing there. And uh, so, you know, I was there was one guy, and he had like a a business suit, and there's this other guy, and anyway, long story longer, I just kind of squeezed through, and I was like, please, excuse me, old man, I just need to get up to the front counter, please, and then the one guy was like, Wah! and then he beat me up, so then, on my way back up here, I drove up Power Street, and there was a girl, and she was sitting on the back of a motorcycle, and, and I recognized her from her, the back, uh, from, I, I, um, I recognized her, so I went and said hello, and so, yeah, now I'm here. I got you. I got you. So what you're saying is she was a lot more interesting to talk to than Dan Dorfman. Well, you know, I don't know about interesting. <laughs> she's not, She, you know, she's like, meh, you know. Uh, hey. You know, she's she's a little bit like that. You know what I mean? Oh. But uh, you know, she's kind of you know. Well, she's younger, so. <laughs> well, which which uh which which one of the which one of the uh you know. Which one of the the crazy ones uh, was it? Because <laughs> it, there's a there's a city like a, I got a, a roster of like the two crazy for me's in case my wife leaves me list. I just want to make oh. sure she's on it. Well, I mean, most women, are, you know, it's, 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 you throw a rock and, you know, you're pretty much going to strike a crazy one. But, uh, no, this one, what was her name? Let's see. Coco? I think it was Coco. Coco. All right. I don't think I've met a Coco yet. Yeah. Anyway. All right, fair enough. Well, tell me a little bit about the uh, the issue that you had. Um, you were, you hey, were can telling I ask me. A question? Yeah, go for it. How come we're at the FIB building? Uh, number one, it's a uh, reasonably safe place to to talk, and uh, well, it's a great question because what I uh, you should know before we uh, before we chat, uh, I am an investigator for the DA's office, so I work for the district attorney. Not that there's any cases here or anything, but, uh, you know, you said that you were, you know, uh, concerned about, uh, you know, some criminal activity, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, you know, if there's something that you want to, you know, tell me that maybe I could help you out with, that's great. You know, otherwise, you know, just understand that, um, you know, you, you don't want to, if you're going to say anything, you have, you do have, uh, you know, as far as official uh, you do have the right to have a, an attorney present if you want. You're not arrested or anything like that. You're just here of your own free will. But you do have the right to have an attorney present uh, if you wish. But this is a safe place to talk, well, so it's out of the way. If, you, uh, if you're if you not comfortable with that, we can maybe go around by the fountain or what have you. I just figure out of sight, out of mind, you know. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you, Dan. Um, I mean, congratulations on the on the job. Uh, you know, I'm glad to, to know that, um, you know, things are picking up and, and you're doing well. Uh, well. You know, back around Christmas time, it was just, you know, kind of up in the air for both of us, you know. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I uh, Hey, don't, don't congratulate me too hard. I, I've still got people who want to kill me, and uh, and now I'm broke. So... I, I was doing a lot better no, back then. Well, yeah. Well, Let, wait, uh, the DA's is, office didn't pay you or, or what? Yeah, this is kind of like uh, right now it feels like it's a voluntary position that I fund. <laughs> My wife hates wow. it. Wow. Yeah, she hates it. I, I, I would imagine. Yeah. Every, you know how everybody but, um, uh, lately is going into these nice houses? You know, even if you're go, they're going into a house down around Grove or Forum or up in Sandy or what have you, you know, people are still getting decent homes and, and everything else. I couldn't afford a down payment on a wet nap. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyways, well, uh, I look, mean, 
you know, if, if you don't feel comfortable talking to me, I, uh, you know, knowing that I work for the district attorney's office, I totally understand that. Uh, I just thought I might be able to help you out given that you, you feel like your life is in danger. And, uh, yeah, I'll be honest with you. Uh, yeah. Russell, probably the best people to help you out in the city is going to be the police. I mean, you know, your grandson, he's a trooper. One of, you know, one of the best. And, uh, <laughs> You know, he, uh, you know, I know he'd, he'd be concerned for you, you know, to find out that, that, you know, you feel like your life is in danger. Nobody, nobody should have to worry about, you know, what's coming in, you know, somebody coming at them from the back or from the front, you know, sh filling them full of lead with illegal weapons. I mean, that, that stuff has to stop. The only way we stop it is, uh, you know, people that want that, uh, you know, are going to, uh, you know, tell us what's going on. Tell us what's happening. Yeah. Can I have a seat? Yeah, sure. Want a cup of coffee or anything? Yeah, it's fine. Dan, I'm not going to lie to you, buddy. Uh... Lots been going on these days. It's been a pretty violent three weeks in the town. I've had to see a lot of people I care about get hurt. It's no, not a, never a good feeling. Not at all, buddy. Not at all. I've, uh... I've had some friends of my own uh, just kind of leave the city, not of their own accord. Um, well, I'm going to tell you to, uh, I'm going to tell you. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, I got, uh, I, I, I got into some shit that I probably shouldn't have gotten into. Um, mostly drugs. And maybe a couple of cars that I boosted. And uh, the people that I dealt with, uh, you know, they don't really care about the person doing it. They just care about the bottom line and the money. And uh, I dealt with some people that, uh, you know, they don't give second chances, apparently. They didn't even give me one chance, you know. They tell me, hey, Russell, here you go. Go do this for us. And then pay us. And then, you know, I wasn't in town for a while to pay them. And then they come back over to me and they're like, hey, you didn't pay us. Now you're going to get shot. But what the funny thing is, is they shot me and said pay us. And I don't get it, you know. I went to the hospital. I had a bullet barely fucking missed my liver. The doctor said I'm lucky to be here. I mean, like, yeah, how you, am I supposed uh... to pay them if I'm dead? Yeah. I I know the feeling. Uh, my own my own situation where I was left on a beach to die. You know, honestly, the uh the people that did it they uh they could have gotten so much more out of me than uh, $10,000. <laughs> and uh and my life. I I just don't get it. I was just doing my job, Russell. That's what I, that's what I was doing. I was just reporting the news and somebody Somebody got a, you know, saw a broadcast, a story that they didn't like. And, you know, it's, it's not, wasn't one of those stories that we could just look at and go, you know what, let's not really air that. Now, this was big news. It was uh, the councilman's murder, Councilman Preston. Big news in the city. Oh. You know, you, get, you, lose, oh, wow. a, you lose a politician like that, a yeah, city council member, mayor, uh, you know, police chief, that's, that's news that, uh, that, you know, that, that stuff has to get reported. It, it doesn't get swept under the rug. You know, there is no editorial discretion on that. And, uh, they didn't like it. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it is what it is. I wonder if they like, uh, I wonder if they like me now. <laughs> you know? Right. Anyhow. Uh, 
I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that that happened to you. I mean, obviously, when you start dealing with some of the major criminal elements in this city, they, uh, they don't take it very kindly when uh, they feel like they're getting the shaft, especially around, uh, you know, especially around their business. Right. That's for sure. I found out the hard way. Are you a Vietnam vet? Yes, sir. I uh, flew, a ch uh, flew a chopper. No kidding. Uh, I was, uh, yeah, I was um, mostly uh, medically, uh, you know, oriented. Uh, didn't really fly any of the uh, Apaches or anything like, well, not an Apache, but uh, you know what I'm saying. It wasn't any of the, uh, it was... I wasn't killing anybody. I was helping people. Yeah. That's why I don't like guns. <laughs> no, I, uh. I got you. I always thought that, uh, you know, carrying a gun just made me more susceptible to violence because then I was I wasn't using my head. That's why as a news reporter, I kept uh, kept away from. I kept away from guns uh, for a while. And it wasn't until I had my own life threatened that that I really ended up. Uh, starting to train myself and learn how to carry a firearm responsibly and after uh, they left me for dead well game changed decided to come back to Los Santos to help people uh, like your friend people who uh, end up murdered or uh, you know attempts on innocent people and uh, I, even if they're guilty I mean nobody deserves death except for the rare few the real monsters out there. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So what do you... Uh, so these got the Was it uh, one individual or was it uh, multiple people that uh, took shots at you? It was a couple of punks. Uh... Uh, one kid uh, came up to me. Uh, I was, you know, I already got arrested for it. Uh, I got, I had a few bags of weed on me. I was uh, slinging it over there near, uh, you know, near the uh, south side, southeastern side of the city. Jamestown apartment areas. And, uh, a little bit more, uh, more, you know, west, you know. So closer to More the brothers. I got you closer to Form Drive and uh, right Strawberry. Yeah, Darren Davis. Yeah, yeah. around that area. Yeah. So yeah, it was. Um, Isn't that nice though? That's couple freaking of boys, good. Uh, I don't. I, I only caught the name of one guy, and because uh, his other friend was telling him, "No, Jimmy, don't do it, Jimmy," and he shot me. And uh, I was I could have crawled away, uh, but then he shot me again. He's like, "Pay your debts." And then the other guy, I heard him before I, I blacked out. Don't do it, Jimmy. No, Jimmy, you're so stupid. So that's all I heard. And then like uh, I woke up in the hospital, talked to legs, and I, I pretty much told him, you know, I'm just I'm sick and tired of uh, always having to be. I don't know. I walk, I go through town and I'm driving a car and somebody's like, hey, I want your car. Or, hey, Russell, put your hands in the air. I want all the money that you got on you. You know, I used to be, uh, I used to be something, you know, back in, um, you know, when I was younger. I didn't really have a choice. I was drafted. Hey, Purple Tentacle. Uh, wouldn't have been my choice. But I think it, it, it changed me. You know, when I was growing up, I had money. My dad had money. Uh, the government said, hey, you got to pay your dues. And I did. And, uh, you know, like I said, I, I, I worked for, for uh, I was a medic. That's why I don't like guns, because I saw a lot of, a lot of shit. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just starting to get to that point where, I mean, I got to carry a gun just to make sure that I'm not going to get shot myself for doing nothing. You know, I, I joke around and I kid and, the, you know, the cops are always like, oh, you know, I feel like I have my own set of rights. You know, hey, Russell, you have the right to remain Russell. Anything you say or do can and will be used to beat the shit out of you with in the cells with the cameras turned off. 
they've never actually done that, but I, you know, sometimes it just it feels that way. But I mean, it's uh, it's kind of tough, right, uh, Mr. Leonard? When you, uh, you know, you've been around the block enough times. You, like you said to me when we were out there on the street, when you make a, uh, you made some choices, and and those choices bring you in contact with, uh, you know, some of the some of the worst elements of the city. And you know, I guarantee you, the majority of people that live here in Los Santos, you know, they they don't even they're probably not even aware some of that stuff goes on, other than what they might see on the evening news. Right. Yeah. You know, you and I, unfortunately, we, uh, you know, we're right in the middle of the suck. <laughs> you know, either by choice or yeah. by uh, well, either way, it's by choice. I'm just yeah, trying to. Sucks. I'm just trying to fight against the suck. You know. It sounds like you might be too. You might be tired of it, which is admirable. Yeah, I'm I mean, definitely tired of this suck. Yeah, you've been you've been through uh, been through a lot in your life. You damn sure didn't uh, you know whatever uh, whatever woes you've done in life, uh, Mr. Leonard. You you probably paid for them in the service that you did to the country in Vietnam. But you know it's uh, you've got to make some better choices, right? Yeah. You know, I I haven't uh, I haven't known a lot of people in this city. I did meet one guy, seemed pretty cool, and then I found out he was killed. He was, doesn't exist anymore. Who was that? Uh, his name was Luke. Luke uh, was he a EMS? No, he was a hillbilly. Ah, uh, you're talking about Mr. Luke Colton. Yeah, that's it. I only had the pleasure of meeting yeah, we him uh, once or twice, just in passing. He uh, seemed like a, what do they call it uh, down south? A good old boy? And I don't mean that disrespectfully. Yeah. I mean that as a, uh, you know, very friendly. He was uh, dealing with some family uh, issues, I guess, that... Uh, his family kind of got involved in some of the members of his family seemed to be a little more aggressive towards the police and uh, kind of end up on the wrong side of the law. Nonetheless, uh, Mr. Colton didn't deserve what happened to him. I've uh, in fact that case files on my desk. I've been working it for some time now. Yeah, I don't know all the details. I just know he doesn't. He's not around anymore. You know, and we went. Uh we went to uh, um, what, what do you call it? Metal detecting. It was fun. Yeah, that's uh, that's it. In fact, uh, he used to run a metal detecting business here in town. Uh, I believe uh, one he? of his uh, one of his coworkers uh, was was gunned down with him uh, by the name of uh, Lorenzo Abbott. You might know him as the Big Puffer if you ever met him. Never uh, met him. Dan's working on the. Uh, he's working on the no, uh, I don't know Jasper him. Elliott case. He's got. Uh, I don't really know a lot of Dash people. Armstrong I mean, I know case. a few. I know of a few people, and that's what I was telling Legs last night. You know, I know, I know some of the people that I was dealing with when I was boosting cars, and the same guy that ran the the, the car boosting business was the same guy that uh, I'm pretty sure these Doug Punk fuckers last night worked for. But what makes you say that? It's just a feeling. They ever? Uh, he's the only guy. They ever contact the you by here's phone? Here's how I know. Uh, yeah, uh, a long time ago, I uh, I I borrowed a helicopter, and I had uh, I had his phone number previously that from. Well, we made a deal. Uh, I made a deal with the guy that uh, if I sold weed in his area, I would pay him. And, I see. Uh, you know what? I think at this time it was more about the boosting cars. I, like I said, I, I dealt with this guy for a couple of times. And uh, one was boosting cars and the other one was uh, he, had, he put a gun in my <sighs> mouth. Made me get on my knees. And... Uh, put a shotgun right in my fucking mouth and told me that uh, if I didn't do what he said, you know, a blammo, 
I don't like Russell. this. And then he made me Jesus. give him a hug after Britain. It was weird. He made, you, um, he made you give him a hug? Yeah. Jeez. He he said, no, no. He he had a voice similar to mine. He's like, oh, right, right, no, give me a hug. And, uh, well, you know, I did because, well, he had a shotgun, so. You yeah, know, what, he didn't try anything. Now, I didn't, like, have to blow him or anything. Okay, so th this hug wasn't like a, it wasn't like a full-on middle touching hug. It was kind of like a bro hug. No, 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 no. You know, just kind of the shoulders yeah, no, maybe, penis. but yeah, they, they, you, you didn't touch tips is what I'm saying. Right, right. No, there was no t <laughs> touching. No, right. his his wiener was inside. Yeah, okay. Of, of his pants, pants, not of right. me. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, that was just a regular hug. Right. But, you know, it was yes. it was like no touching of middles occurred. Yeah. Correct. That is, yeah. I even pulled away. I pulled my hips away. So yes. Yeah, yeah. It's a, um, that would that's be what I would call the bro hug. You know, where you you kind of lean in with your shoulders, but it's not like a, it's not like a, you know, you're not you're not you're not trying to like touch middle. So you you kind of both back. It's just generally accepted practice. You know, you both back off. Right. Yeah. Yes. It's like when two guys go to a movie. You know, you you, you get the bro seat right in between. You know, you don't sit directly next to that's each right. other. That's right. Yeah, that's right. You, you use the seat between you to like put the popcorn and and, and you know, in your girlfriend's purse or whatever. Yeah, and especially if it's Not one of those uh, one of those theater seating places where they the arms uh, the armrests go up because you don't want to be like in the situation where, you know, these uh, these young ladies think that you know you're there with your boyfriend and you got the uh, armrest up, you know. Because that's a definite giveaway. If you got the armrest up, that's a no-no. It's like a real big no-no. <laughs> Dan's got some gay. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> hey, uh, all right. So did this guy, uh, did he have a mask on or what did he look like? You recall? Uh, uh, from yeah, from the two guys or the, the, the guy that uh, I had dealings with? The guy that you had dealings with, that you were telling me about with the shotgun? Yeah. That wanted uh, to hug. He a little... No, yeah, yeah, he's a little Filipino guy. No, he didn't have a he didn't have a, a mask or anything either time. So I, I, I kind of borrowed a helicopter one time and took him for a ride around the city. And, uh, and then the next time I saw him down on Grove Street, neither, neither case he was wearing a mask. Okay. All right. Interesting. What about this guy that uh, that shot you? He, you said uh, his name was Jimmy, or at least that's what the other guy called him. That's what the other guy called him. Um, yeah, they were both wearing masks, but uh, I know that there were a couple of black guys, and I you know I can't remember what car they drove up in, but they. They they threw me into the back of my own car, and uh, drove me down to the docks. Uh, they weren't too bright because they put a shotgun in the trunk with me. I just it was too dark. I wasn't able to grab a hold of it uh, before you know they opened the trunk. So I, otherwise hey, I would have gotten out blasting. But uh, anyway, so yeah, Jimmy and uh, I don't know the other guy's name. I if I I don't I feel like I did that. He didn't say. He, the Jim quote unquote Jimmy didn't say anything to the other guy as far as like a name was concerned, but um, but yeah, uh, the little Filipino guy that I was uh, dealing with, he had a he had a he his like second his like his, his lieutenant or whatever I don't know, you know he he was a black guy. Uh, he wore jeans and a white shirt. He actually mugged me first time I came into the city. Like, I literally, like, the no second kid. day I came into the city. He Jeez. Fucking, he mugged me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway. All right. And then you already gave all this information over to Legs? Yeah, he told me that I could be in contact with the, you know, the DA's office and, and whatnot. Uh, so, I mean, if you work for him, you know, there we go. And I'm kind of, kind of, kind of working the old, uh, working it right now, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, 
Do you have any text from these Wait. guys uh, that were on the block that, um, you know, that uh, came by? Or do they just, you know, they just uh, approached you and then said, hey, you didn't pay us and then uh, and then shot you right then? Uh, yesterday. Yeah, no, nobody, nobody texted me or contacted me yesterday. I actually. OK, so. You know how the uh, iFruit uh, company uh, just moved in uh, not too long ago? Uh, I haven't actually yeah. gotten any texts from any of my previous dealings with these people since the iFruit okay. uh, came since out. Okay, uh, since the new orange uh, came out, the iFruit orange right, or whatever. Exactly. Yeah, the... yeah, yeah, yeah. All my, all my texts were uh, on the old, uh, on the old uh, Notarola. So how do they know, uh, you know, if, if this was kind of like a new incident, how did they know that these guys know that you didn't pay? That's what I was wondering. They took five grand off of me, too. It was, how much money were, uh, did they say you uh, that you owed them? Uh, they didn't say. I don't think they told me an amount. They just said, pay your debt. And then they took all the money that I had on me. They're like you, you, you had a deal. I don't know. It's my my memory is scattered. You know, sometimes I wake up and I have more of a memory, and then, you know, right now I can't remember everything that was said. And a lot happened. You know. Yeah, I understand. But, uh, yeah, and it was just said it pay your debts. Pretty traumatic, you know. So, you probably uh, hadn't right. seen that kind of treatment since uh, since the war. Really. Oh, yeah. No, it, it's been a while. Actually, the last time I got that kind of bullshit treatment was from my ex-wife when she kicked me out of the fucking house for cheating on her. And, you know, I didn't even she, – she didn't even catch me. You know, she – those girls were out of the house before my wife got home, so oh, she doesn't but, know. Oh, but, uh, you know, Ms. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Leonard, you know that the women are plugged in. They have these extra sensory – I'm convinced of it. Uh, that they have like extra sensory perception, and uh, I think it's I think they're all plugged into something I like to refer to as the uh, uh, the what is it the the Ovary News Network O the O N N, and it's like a transmission. Hey, have you seen anyone seen my husband Leonard? Yes, me and uh, Trixie are here with him right now on the couch. Are you in my house? Yes, you're in, we're in the house right now. He's getting us to leave because you're supposed to be home in 10 minutes. You know, so they communicate back and forth with each other. It, it's like that extra perception. They know they know something's going on. That makes sense. Yeah, we, we can't get away with it, but 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 they sure as hell can. They, they're like constant communication. It's like a hive mind. <laughs> Believe me, my wife and her sister... Exactly the same perception. Just, and then I get this and I come in, you know, I come in from work. It's like, uh, how was your day? Where were you? Took a long time to get home. You left the, when did you leave the office? You know, and she's asking all these questions because she knows the answer to them. So, you know, you're screwed. <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, they're fucking crazy. Yeah. They're crazy. So, you know, Mr. Uh, Mr. Leonard, I gotta, I gotta ask you a question. Are, are you, uh, do you have any, um, uh, violent, uh, you know, have you been convicted of any violent crime? Any felonies? No. No. Well, you know, if you haven't been convicted of any felonies, I'm not exactly up to date on what the policy and procedure is well. at the, uh, medical, uh, team, but. You know, you did have pri you did have experience as a, uh, you know, doing medical uh, work in the, in the army. Uh, maybe you could parlay that into a career here in Los Santos. Get you out of the streets and stop doing that stuff you're getting involved in. It's getting you in touch with all these dangerous yeah. people. Yeah, I mean, I do have felonies on my record. Yeah, that's gonna be a. Uh, that's going to be a problem, but, you know, it could be something if you were, you know, willing to, uh, if you're willing to, you know, if you're sincere about kind of, you know, changing and, you know, uh, it might be something to talk to the DA directly about. Maybe there's something that could be done. Some, uh, 
community service work or something that could uh, kind of get you into the swing of things. You know, maybe over at the hospital. Maybe you could, maybe you could help me. What do they call those? Uh, like a uh, kind of a candy striper kind of, you know, where you're helping people out, patients coming in, make sure that, uh, you know, the hospital registers people and, and we get them back in an orderly fashion, give out information as to, to, you know, family as far as people that are injured and, you know, just generally help the doctors and various other people. And I don't know, maybe something could uh, can happen there for you, Mr. Leonard, that uh, gives you an opportunity to change your life around a little bit. In the meantime, we'll, yeah, we'll uh, see. you know, we're uh, we're looking into and investigating, uh, and we'll be investigating these guys uh, that did this to you, and see if we can't figure out who the hell these people are. Now, where did this uh, where did this shooting occur at? Can you can you tell me? Yeah, it was over on the bridge by uh, Mays Bank. Wait, no, that's where they picked me up from was May Mays Bank area. And then they drove me down to were you uh, the inside docks. the were you inside the bank or were you uh, outside the bank in front of the a, door? No, I was at a uh, you know what a scrapyard is over over at the uh, there's a bridge uh, near Mays Bank Arena. Oh, I see. Mays like Bank. Uh, I see. Okay. Oh, and that's where they picked you up at down there, not not the bank. Right. And then they took me. Okay. No, no, no. And then they took me to the docks, and then that's where the rest. That's where all the magic happened. Mayweather docks. Was it the, uh, the ones across from the uh, from no. the military installation that's over there? I honestly, I could not tell you to be to be truthful. Uh, I imagine because it was uh, from, I, I believe, the legs and uh, EMS would probably know. Yeah, okay. All right. I'll I'll uh, I'll check with them and see. Interesting. All right. Well, we'll see if we can, uh, we'll see if we can find out who did this. Did they, uh, by any chance, pass by with you in tow a... Um, Kind of like a green trestle bridge going down towards the dock area. Uh, no. Okay, so not a green, like a green steel bridge, nothing like that, that you recall? No, not that, not that I can recall, no. All right, all right. Well, I'll find out uh, where they, uh, where they were able to pick you up at. Were you conscious when they found you, or were you, uh, did they leave you unconscious? No. They left you to die. No, there. I didn't regain Bastards. consciousness till I was, uh, yeah, back in the hospital. All right. All right, well, we'll see what we can, uh, what we can figure out, uh, Mr. Leonard. The, uh, the individual, cool. this, uh, this one individual, Jimmy, is not, that's not a name I've heard before, so, uh. You know, at least yeah, he's, I mean, he's not on my radar as it relates to uh, any gang activity down in that area. But there are uh, other officers yeah. that have, uh, have uh, you know, pretty good lists. Uh, I can consult, see if I find someone that's of, uh, of interest. I might also look through, uh, you know, arrest recent arrest records and see if I can find someone that's, uh, see, if, see what I can turn up. All right. And, um, yeah, like I told Lex, I got, uh, there was a few people that, uh, I've had dealings with before that was, that knew, they all kind of know each other, you know, the criminals in this, uh, the city are thick as thieves and, you know, they, they, everybody knows everybody and, you know what, I'm kind of unassuming and I feel like they probably talked a little bit more around me than they might have normally, but, uh. You know, I, I didn't pick up on a lot of names, but uh, I know faces, you know. All I right. don't know if the, the police have, like, books or anything like that, but uh, I'd be willing to uh, I'd be willing to talk and see what kind of things we can come up with in order to make uh, make all this violence stop. Because, like I said, I'm, I'm not a violent person, and I don't want to see all these people get killed, you know. I, I'd like to know that if I meet somebody new and I like, in, you know, hanging out with them, 
they're, they're going to be there tomorrow, you know? Yeah, me too. Uh, me too, Mr. Leonard. Everybody has a right to, you know, to life. And, uh, you know, there's uh, there's a few people in this town that think that they are the judge, jury, and executioner, and they're, they're not afraid to do it. It's a sad truth. But uh, we're only going to get to them with, uh, with the help of uh, citizens that are willing to, you know, willing to uh, give us information that uh, could possibly lead to an arrest. And I'm not talking, some of these guys, they, we can't just pick them up for a, you know, a petty slap on the wrist and send them back into the street. They, they need to go away for a long time, for, uh, for a long time. It's they're, yeah, they're I due. agree. The butcher's bill is is due. Absolutely. All right. Uh, anything else uh, comes to mind there, Mister Leonard? Uh, no, but uh, you know, if uh, if you want me to, I can uh, I can see if I can scrounge up uh, some of the. Um, I can, I can see if I can scrounge up my old cell phone and uh, see if I can pull any numbers or texts or anything. Yeah, if you got something like that, that'd be uh, you know where you you made the deal for this uh, for an amount of money. I think that's uh, very material to your case, Mister Leonard, because uh, after all, the people, the motive of the people that shot you was that they they felt like or claimed that you owed them some money. So. Yeah. That's a uh, that that'd be a very important piece of evidence. All right, I'll see what I can come up with. All right, sure thing. Do you need my card, or do you still have it? No, I'll I'll, I'll definitely take it. I can put it in my new phone. There you go, Mister Leonard. Yeah, it's a hundred. I think it was a hundred and six or a hundred and seven here today. It was crazy. All right, let me give you. How my you doing, AJ? Number. Russell Leonard. Six one zero. Seven six seven two. Got it. All right, I appreciate it. All right, Dan, hopefully we can uh, bring some of these buttholes to justice because I'll tell you what, I don't like carrying around a piece in my back pocket. I got it's you. It's very uncomfortable. I got you. For, you know, I think one of the first steps uh, for you, Mr. Leonard, is going to be uh, letting go of that of the bullshit that, uh, you know, whatever it is that you're doing down there that these guys are getting you to pay for is uh, all that's got to stop, you know, and we need to get you another, you know, another type of job, something that uh, you feel comfortable in where you can bring some money in. And uh, that's why I was thinking, well, if you had didn't have those felonies on your record, uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe you could get back into the EMT and, you know, get back into helping people instead of, uh, yeah. you know, selling drugs or whatever it is that you're uh, you're involved in. You know, like you said, what uh, pinching cars or you know, the, you deal with that around yeah. this city, you're gonna be you're gonna be running right into the path of some of these people who uh, just as soon they're all happy while you're paying them, but just as soon as they feel like you're crossing them, they're gonna leave you for dead somewhere. I don't want to see that happen. That's true. That's true. You know, maybe we can all do it together. You know, I, I haven't really. You know, ever since, uh, you know, I went to the bad side of the, the law, you know, after, you know, my my divorce and all that stuff, you know, I was kind of homeless and, you know, like hopeless and all that good stuff. And, you know, I uh, I did what I did. You know, I haven't been the smartest criminal in the world. You know, I've been to jail many times, but I'll tell you what, going to, that j going to jail that many times, you learn a few things. And what I learned is uh, I'm too old for this. You know, I'm tired. Yeah. I uh I can imagine. I mean it's it's hard time and 
I don't know how many, uh, hopefully you have uh, a good amount of years left, left, Mr. Leonard, but you don't want to be spending whatever precious years you do have left up there at Bolingbrook. You don't want to be doing that. You want to be, uh, yeah. You want to be outside here, you know, with your freedom and right. You know, some time to maybe, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe uh, set things right with your grandson. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe he deserves a good swift kick in the tail. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, probably. But I'm sure he could probably benefit from some of your, uh, you know, some of the things that you went through in your life. You've seen a lot. You deserve better for yourself. And uh, the good news is, is you're in control of a lot of that. A lot of those decisions you're in control of. Right. And we'll see what we can do about the, uh, about this what Jimmy fellow. Yeah. I don't want just Jimmy, though. I want everybody. Yeah, well, we're, uh, you know, we're, we're working uh, a lot of different cases right now along the south side, so... Believe me, if we get an right, opportunity, well, we will. Well, we'll take down the Fantastic. whole organization. All of them. Hopefully I can be of some help. Yeah, hopefully so there, Mr. Leonard. Uh, first, why don't you see if you can find that, uh, that message for me? I think that's material to your case. We'll do it. I'll go look into uh, do my some boxes that I got back at the uh, Lucky Plucker, see what I can come up with, and uh, I'll be in touch with you. All right. You got an e you got an email address or anything? It's uh, right there on the back you? of the it's right there under the back of the card. It's uh, it gives you a government address and. All right. Oh, Dan did. All right. Well, if there's uh, nothing right. else, Mr. Leonard, I got to get uh, some work done. And right. uh, I got, got some cases I got to put the polishing touches on from a uh, report standpoint. So. All right. Sounds good. Let me shake your hand there, yeah. sir. All yeah, right. sure thing. Uh, all right, sir. It was good talking to you, and I'll be in touch with you soon. Okay? Yeah, be safe, all right? Yeah, you too. Sure thing. <laughs>